students so we are going to start with your first chapter in your science section a okay we have two sciences this year with you that is science section a and section b your science section a will cover with your chemistry and physics whereas your science section b will be covering your biology and ebs now when we talk about your science a i am going to first start with your second chapter and that is periodic classification of elements now when we talk about these particular chapter we have already done something in your standard 8 and in your standard 9 so with that basis we are going to start with your 10th standard second chapter now when we talk about the name of the chapter periodic classification of elements we are going to try to understand the name of the chapter but first we will try to understand something which is very basic that is something known as elements in the subject of chemistry okay now if someone ask you what is matter so anyone ask me what is matter my immediate reply is any particular substance that has mass that occupies space and that can be perceived through our senses perceive matlab pata chalta Let's say, for example, when we talk about air, air is also a matter. We can't see it, but we can feel it. So I can perceive through my senses, and that is what our matter is. Now, my second question: When I am talking about this particular types of matter, so try understanding what are the types of matter. I have two answers for this. The first way of classifying my matter can be solids, liquids. gases and plasma as we have already done in your lower standards but i am not going to deal with this type of classification for matter i am in fact going to talk about something other than this which you have done in your 8th standard also and that particular classification will be of matter is your pure substances and your mixtures okay mixtures everyone knows what is a mixture you take two or three samples just merely mix it and you get a mixture now when i talk about your pure substances pure substances comprises of two things first is elements and second is my compound now you have got a clear idea that sir has dragged this particular question of matter to the elements and yes i have dragged that because we are going to study about elements only try talking about my smallest particle of a matter so my smallest particle of the matter obviously it is going to be my atom everyone knows that because from fourth standard fifth standard sixth standard continuously we are studying the same thing to agar mere ko kisi ne pucha sir chhota part matter ka kya hai then everyone answers will be your atom now atom is not the smallest part but there are more sub atomic particles matlab atom ke andar present rehne wale particles even those are going to be there but till for right now in your 10th standard we are going to consider only your atom being the smallest particle of my uh, matter now my next question will be is there any difference between molecule of an element or molecule of my compound yes there is a considerable difference between the two when i talk about a molecule of an element molecule of an element means my particular molecule of an element is going to be the same particular matter or you can say if i am talking about a molecule of oxygen so molecule of oxygen we all know that oxygen is an element but when i talk about a molecule i will be having two atoms of oxygen so have i got any changes in that no when i talk about a compound so a compound can be made up of same element or can be made up of different elements let's say for example a compound known as carbon dioxide so when i talk about carbon dioxide i have one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen are you getting this point so over here we gave a basic introduction about the matter and your elements so now the name of the chapter again i am repeating name of the chapter is periodic classification of elements we understood the part of the element now we try understanding the classification 
What do you mean by classification? In day to day life, when we talk about, let's suppose I give you one example. I want a book on human anatomy from your library. Go and find it out. Only that particular word is enough to tell you everything. You will go to the library and when you enter the library, you will go through different sections. Okay, I enter, I got English literature, I got Marathi literature, I got history section, I got geography section and I go ahead to my science section. Okay, I got my science department. I am going to enter over there and there I am able to see different type of subsections. So subsections mein aapko kya kya milega? You will get something related to chemistry, you will get uh, physics, you will get biochemistry and you will get something known as biology. So sir ne kya bola tha aapko lane ke liye? Human anatomy ka bola tha. So you go to biology section and start searching. Isn't this a very simple way uh, to understand your classification? Okay, because my library has been classified into different subjects to find one particular book it becomes very easy. Are you getting this point? And that's the need for my classification. Now when we talk about elements, try understanding something uh, when the earth was formed. So uh, when we talk about the uh, discovery of the elements, okay, the discovery of the elements are slow and progressive. Okay, though these elements were present in nature quite a long time before, humans didn't knew about it and slowly slowly humans tried to discover it. Okay, and when this discovery was done, even in the elements there were changes over and over again and again and that was shown by our scientists and has led us to the discovery of 118 elements okay so this is a basic example of classification and why we need to classify we need to classify because if i want to study a particular element in detail classification makes it more and more easier so all these elements and their discovery started taking to its peak in the year 1800 okay so in the year 1800 there were only 30 elements that were discovered Okay, and later on in this 30 elements, all majority of the scientists were trying to find out a way to classify because classification makes your studies more and more easier and convenient and it helps us to understand about any particular things in a very systematic manner. So when we were trying to classify this, okay, there was a traditional way of classifying your elements. And that traditional way, everyone knows that when I want to classify my elements, I will simply classify into what you have done in your lower standards, metals, non-metals and metalloids. This is the traditional way of classifying my elements. Now, when I talk about this traditional way of classifying my elements as metals, non-metals and metalloids, it's simply based on very physical properties. Very physical properties means they are going to be precise. Like when I talk about your melting point, conduction of heat, conduction of electricity, they are physical states. These are few examples of physical properties. Based on that, I have classified as metals, non-metals and metalloids. But this wasn't enough for the detailed study and over here in the year 1817 1817 the first scientist who came into this action of classifying my elements was Dauberainer okay he was a German scientist and he gave his own law for classifying the elements and his law is referred to as law of trials okay before we jump to law of trials, there is something which is very uh, necessary or the base to understand the entire concept is something related to my atomic mass. Okay, and atomic mass is abbreviated by alphabet A. Now, why I am talking about atomic mass, you will come to know quickly. Just if you remember what is the formula for atomic mass? Formula for atomic mass is supposed to be number of 
protons plus number of neutrons okay try understanding this during 18th century there wasn't the discovery of electron as a sub atomic particle neither was the discovery of proton as a sub atomic particle okay and so all the scientists were trying to relate the properties of the elements based on the atomic mass they always thought that there is some relation between atomic mass and the elements and their physical and chemical properties okay this was the simplest thing which they thought and all the scientists started with it understand doberiner wasn't the first one to classify there were many other scientists but the most promising results at that point of time was done by doberiner now let's try to understand what he tried to do or what he tried to did rather and then we will try to understand his law first of all since atomic mass was taken as the source of trying to relate the properties of elements okay whatever elements he knew at that point of time were arranged in increasing order of atomic masses so obviously the first element which comes into picture is always hydrogen because atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and then slowly slowly he started uh, putting the elements in increasing atomic mass okay now after this the second step what he did was he tried to relate their chemical properties jo bhi uska chemical properties tha na wo sab usne likh ke diya and what did he do next after writing the chemical properties he started putting three elements in one particular group he made a group of three elements these three elements show very much similar chemical properties okay and this particular group of three elements is now referred to as triad okay usko hum log kya bolte hai triad so one example i want to show you explaining that how this law of triad came into action now see when you talk about lithium sodium and potassium okay today we all know that based on the modern periodic table all these three are metals and they are alkali metals and so they have a strong reactivity with oxygen also as well as with water also so now lithium sodium and potassium this is the time at 1800 century okay in 1870s so at this point of time what happened they have the same chemical properties to usne ek group bana diya that is lithium sodium and potassium now he took the atomic masses now atomic mass of lithium is supposed to be 6.9 okay whereas atomic mass of potassium is 39.1 sodium's atomic mass is 23 now see how he tried to find out the relation what did he do he took the sum of the first and the last element in the triad matlab ye triad mein my first element is lithium my sec my last element the third element is potassium so if i abbreviate it with alphabets it will better for you to understand so over here he tried taking the mean a plus c divided by 2 so when you try to calculate 6.9 plus 39.1 divided by 2 this is going to give me how much this is going to give me 46 divided by 2 which is 23 This is the mean of my first and last element ka atomic masses. Again, I am repeating. I am talking about atomic masses. Generally, students get themselves confused between atomic mass and atomic number. When I am talking about Doberiner, Doberiner ke time pe nothing was said about atomic number, neither electrons, neither protons. Okay. so over here if you try calculating like this what did i get the mean of my first and last element 
23. Now this 23 is exactly the same for my <coughs> atomic mass of second element. That is what? Sodium. So the law of trides states that when the arithmetic mean of the first and the last element in a triad was taken, the answer or the mean was same as the atomic mass of my second element in the triad. Okay. Then similarly, if you try calculating the mean of my second triad, this is my triad number two, which is that calcium, strontium and B. Okay. So when you try adding up calcium ka atomic mass and barium ka atomic mass and you try dividing it by 2, you will get the answer somewhere 87.7 which is approximate mean of strontium, the atomic mass of strontium. And the third example is chlorine, bromine and iodine. Okay. So now we are going to talk about uh, the next law that is law of octaves. Firstly, so what happened to try why this was not continued further? It didn't continue further because not all known elements at that point of time were following this particular rule that is law of trends. Okay, and hence this wasn't the best one to classify my elements. And so in the year 1866, there was an English scientist Newland who came out with his own law. Again, the basis for Newland was the same that is my atomic mass means what he said that there is some correlation there is some connection between atomic mass and the properties of my elements the same thing what Dobereyna tried to say okay so now we are going to start with his law of octaves what did he do he also did the same thing he took all the known elements at that point of time during his time there were 56 elements that were known during the time of Dobereyna, there were only 30 elements. During the time of Newland, there have been newly discovered elements and that were 26 more. So now it came up to 56 elements. Now when he was trying to do that, what did he further do? First, arranging the elements in increasing atomic mass number. So jiska jaisa mass number, vaise vaise he started placing them. Okay. Now when he started placing the uh, elements in increasing atomic number uh, mass number sorry so when he did that he found out that the properties of some elements were same now which were these properties both so physical and chemical properties both so when he was trying to do that he placed hydrogen he placed hydrogen then he placed lithium then he placed beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen then he came to fluorine when he came to fluorine, he realized that fluorine had the properties similar to that of hydrogen. So what did he do? He tried placing that hydro, uh, fluorine uh, neighboring to hydrogen or below hydrogen. Then for a change, he got another element sodium whose atomic mass was higher than fluorine and it showed the properties similar to lithium. So he placed sodium below lithium okay then similarly he went on and on and till thorium he was able to make this particular table okay so this he made around 56 boxes in the form of 7 by 8 ka table now when he was trying to place all these things something struck in his mind that it is similar to the Something known as octaves in the music. Okay. That is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, A, T. Indian music me Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni. Okay. Now, the next, what happens? Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni. Then what will happen? Sa, Re, Ga. Sir, same hai. Ha. Lekin uska frequency zada hai. Okay. So over here, the same thing happened also, over here also with respect to elements also. My fluorine had properties similar to that of hydrogen. Now if we talk about, now today we all know, fluorine, chlorine,
bromine, iodine. What are these? These are halogens. Because they are halogens, they have same properties. Okay. So chlorine का property similar to that of fluorine. Okay. Fluorine का property somewhat similar to hydrogen also. Then when we talk about lithium, sodium, potassium, can we see something over here? देखो यहाँ पे ट्राइड आ गया सेम प्रॉपर्टीज द सेम थिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ओवर यू ओके सो दे हैव सिमिलर प्रॉपर्टीज एंड लाइक दैट ही वाज एबल टू क्लासिफाई बट हिस क्लासिफिकेशन डिंट वर्क बियोंड कैल्शियम दिस वाज ओनली ट्रू अप टिल कैल्शियम सो राइट नाउ व्हाट एवर आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ न्यूलेंस ऑप्टिक्स okay what does the law talks about the law says that when the elements were placed in increasing number of atomic masses every eighth element had property abhi let's say for example this is my first element second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth okay so on and so forth now look over here my eighth element had properties similar to the first one that's what the law talks about that when the elements were arranged in increasing order of atomic masses every eighth element had properties similar to that of the first one okay and the same goes true for sodium magnesium aluminum so on and so forth. but this was restricted up till calcium and it didn't work further secondly if you talk about the second advantage or oh, sorry second disadvantage when i talk about the second disadvantage look over here cobalt and nickel both are placed in the same space or in under the same node do no two elements can occupy the same space that's what we study in uh, in the principle of matter also that no, no two matter can occupy the same space the same thing happened over here okay apart from that look at the properties today we all know cobalt and nickel are metals and they are very strong good metals okay what about fluorine chlorine and all they are halogens they are non metals how can you place a metal along with non metals so this came out to be false another disadvantage look over here when we talk about oxygen and sulfur they are non metals look at my fe what does fe stands for fe stands for iron iron is a good metal you we all know about iron correct okay so when we talk about iron iron is a metal whereas oxygen and sulfur are non metal so this is another disadvantage out of this okay then another disadvantage over here is see we all know that during this point of time we had only how many elements 56 known elements i think newland was smart enough to know that there are not 56 elements there were more so there are no vacant spaces in between the elements for undiscovered elements the elements which are supposed to get discovered later okay so no space for them so he was only able to classify 56 but the law didn't work more than that so this is another major drawback and this drawback was overcome by mendeleev in its periodic table okay now what are the probable questions related to these two laws okay first of all you should know the law properly now when you are writing the law suppose if in the question paper they are just going to ask you write uh, the uh, law of triad so at that point of time remember you have to explain the law with the help of one example one example is very very important otherwise marks will be deducted okay so uh, over here just the law you should know the law what's the law and your examples one more question that they generally ask you they are going to give you examples and you have to solve it to say whether that particular triad or whether that particular elements is a triad or it's not a triad so when you talk about showing the triad you have to solve it in this manner it has been already given you in the notes 
how to solve it okay now coming to the next part that is law of octaves even in law of octaves again they are going to ask you the law but definitely you cannot write the example for this law so only law is required that when the elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic masses so and so till that no example required over here. but the most important question over here will be what are the limitations or disadvantages of your newlands law of octaves so in that you all together you have five points generally they ask you only for two marks four points will fetch you two marks easy clear okay. so we we'll talk about now the next law that is mendeleev's periodic law okay around here 1866 sorry it's 1869 to 1872 science did a great progress in finding out 63 known elements now this time okay and this russian chemist was the first one to classify all the 63 elements successfully not even that he was the first person to keep some vacant spaces in between his particular periodic table where the unknown and undiscovered elements was supposed to get discovered lately okay so now this particular mendeleev's periodic law again for him the fundamental property was atomic mass he also said that atomic mass whatever the properties the elements are going to have okay those properties are going to be completely dependent on atomic mass it tells you what it tells you one simple thing that the properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic masses this is a very important law and generally this particular law is either asked as an objective or either asked as a one liner okay so what is mendeleev's periodic law properties of the elements are the periodic function of their atomic mass okay again i am repeating it is atomic mass and not atomic number later on you will come to a point where the same particular definition gets changed only by one word atomic mass will get converted into atomic number okay so students generally make a mistake over there where they are going to talk about mendeleev's periodic law yaad rakho immediately you have to get clicked in your mind that it is atomic mass and not atomic number okay so now when he was trying to place all these particular elements in the table in the form of in a very classification form okay what did he do again increasing atomic number but along with that he even looked at the physical and chemical properties and based on this physical and chem uh, chemical properties he has made something known as your periodic table now this periodic table when we talk about periodic table of mendeleev is going to have something known as groups and something known as periods okay this is going to form your mendeleev's periodic table now when we talk about mendeleev's periodic table for him the groups are columns and how are columns generally columns are vertical okay when we talk about periods periods are nothing but your rows how your rows are rows are always horizontal based on that he was successful in classifying the 63 elements this is a very important point uh, do not forget this that the groups are known as columns and periods are known as your rows so vertical columns are groups and horizontal rows are your periods okay this is the first part now when he was classifying there were enough merits okay and you can talk and you can even say that mendeleev was genius of his time why he was genius that you will understand when we will try to do the merits okay now between mendeleev 
and your new lens there were several other scientists also working side by side on certain type of elements okay and during that point of time they said that beryllium is an element which is going to be placed after boron matlab iska matlab kya ho gaya malum hai what they are trying to say that boron which is symbolized as b okay the symbol of boron is b boron ka atomic mass was lower as compared to beryllium but when mendeleev was trying to find out when he studied the physical and chemical properties he leads to a conclusion that beryllium has lower atomic mass as compared to boron so the initial atomic mass of boron was sorry of beryllium which was 14.09 and it got changed to 9.4 which is considerably less than boron and in the in your mendeleev's periodic table beryllium was placed before boron okay so atomic mass was changed and because of these change in the atomic mass now my periodic table is trying to become more and more stable let's talk about something which we refer him to as genius we refer him to as genius because he left some vacant space in between the periodic table okay now what were that vacant spaces for those spaces were for the elements which have not been discovered till now are so wo kya antaryami tha kya usko sab pata tha yes you can say because that's the reason he was talking about being a genius now what he did was he gave them of specific uh, names okay like names of neighboring elements names of neighboring elements ka matlab let's say for example somewhere in the group group matlab vertical column okay so vertical column mein there was an element boron now just one space leaving there was another vacant space to wo vacant space ka naam usne de diya eka boron okay similarly he gave another vacant space the name as eka aluminium and there was another vacant space which he gave the name as eka silicon okay now the reason for this is first of all he predicted the properties of undiscovered elements to ho gaya bhai wo genius okay so when he was giving the name he even predicted the properties so when he gave the name eka boron he thought that the properties will be similar to the boron okay when he said about eka aluminium it means somewhere the properties will be similar to that of aluminium when he talk about eka silicon properties will be somewhere similar to silicon okay so now just giving you one example what was his thinking when we talk about eka aluminium in today's world later on it was discovered that eka aluminium is referred to as gallium okay so eka aluminium he thought that the atomic mass of eka aluminium is going to be 48 okay and now when we talk about uh, sorry not 48 it's 68 okay and now when we talk about the gallium gallium ka atomic mass is 69.7 it's very far more close correct okay that's the reason we have given him the term as genius now what about its density okay the density of eka aluminium predicted by mendeleev was 5.9 and later on after so many years when gallium was discovered its density came up to 5.94 really very close okay now similarly there were so many of them and it said that eka aluminium is going to be amphoteric in nature i hope you remember your ninth standard amphoteric amphoteric is a nature of a particular element reacting with acids also as well as bases also okay so when we talk about amphoteric in nature he thought eta aluminium is going to be amphoteric in nature and yes gallium is also amphoteric in nature so see it has so many positives it has so many merits and this is one of the favorite question 
of your examiner. They are going to ask you either the merits or the limitations. कभी भी ये particular part को option में नहीं डालने का. Because this is going to fetch you easy two marks or three marks. Okay. Now coming to the noble gas. During this era, okay, from 1869 to 1872, noble gases. We all know noble gases, inert gases, which we talk about. Examples: helium, argon, neon. Okay, these are your inert gases. Those were not discovered. But when you talk about their discovery, okay, Mendeley's periodic table had no place for noble gases. So what did he do? So this noble gases. is also referred to as zero group elements so these zero group elements are placed at the side extreme right of the mendeleev periodic table without hampering or without disturbing the original mendeleev periodic table so this completes your merits i gave you enough exam ha huh. this particular table is there in your textbook okay and you should know basically they don't ask but you should at least know few of them okay so out of 6 even if you remember three of them it should be more than enough for you clear okay now we talk about your limitations okay that are your demerits okay now see the way i have written now exactly you can do it for your learning purpose also when you are trying to revise for your test for your exams okay you remember the main points and you can elaborate the answer but please do not write in your own words see to it that your answer matches your notes okay because those are the words taken from the textbook because your grammatical errors if you make any grammatical errors the entire answer will change to boron ka beryllium bana doge beryllium ka boron bana doge we do not want that you will lose your marks for no reason okay so these are just the terms which you should keep in your mind to write the answers so now starting with your limitations or the demerits so when we talk about your demerits first one cobalt and nickel see what happened mendeleev tried to classify the elements in the table in the periodic table based on atomic masses these atomic masses were chosen as the whole numbers whole numbers everyone knows maths correct so we are not going to talk about the decimal points let's say for example if i have let's say 5.78 or something you will take directly 6 that becomes your whole number basically that is a general idea of a whole number the same thing mendeleev also did that so when we talk about cobalt and nickel cobalt ka atomic mass number is 58.93 and when we talk about nickel it is 58.69 now cobalt being 58.93 and nickel being 58.69 so when you talk about both of them according to increasing number of atomic mass which element should come first your answer is nickel actually or mendeleev bhai sahab kya bol raha tha that we have to arrange the elements according to increase atomic mass so over here this is an anomaly why because what the law is saying is doing reverse of it he has placed cobalt first and then he has placed nickel so he is going against his own law but try to understand this he didn't only take atomic mass as the priority he even took physical and chemical properties so based on that what he was getting that cobalt should come first but according to the law it's going wrong hence it came into your demerit okay so this was your first demerit now let's try to understand isotopes i hope you remember your 8 9 standard where you learned about isotopes okay never mind i am going to clear up this doubt also what do you mean by isotopes isotopes are atoms of same element okay but they have same atomic number but different atomic mass number again i am writing over here so that you get it atoms of same element with 
I am writing short forms. You cannot use short forms in your answers. With same atomic number but different mass number. Okay? So, isotopes definitely they had came later or they were discovered later about it. So, what about the position of isotopes? Where should be isotopes placed? Because Mendeleev ka table is talking about arrangement of elements based on atomic mass. Okay? And over here, isotopes are having the same atomic number. You talk about hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, correct? They are all isotopes of hydrogen. So, where they are supposed to get placed? In your Mendeleev's periodic table, they should have a different spaces of provision to place. But yet, he had placed in the same group or in the same block due to having the same chemical properties. Okay? But again, it went up against the law. What was the law? Classification was done based on atomic mass. But over here, they have been placed in the same. So, isotopes, position of isotope became a disadvantage or a demerit for Mendeleev's periodic table. Then talking about your third demerit that is atomic mass and elements present. Now when we talk about atomic masses, atomic masses were the whole numbers. Now you will come to a point in that table, one element with atomic mass number 72 and another element having atomic mass number 74. Now in between, if you check out over here cobalt and nickel, see what is the difference. In this difference there are two particular elements. So the undiscovered elements, there can be 2, there can be 4, there can be 10, there can be anything. So it didn't give you a proper idea about how many elements can be placed in between the two different whole numbers of atomic masses. Okay. Now when we talk about position of hydrogen, how it is reacting as a metal. Okay. So let's say for example, sodium is also a metal, we will take a reference of sodium. So Sodium reacts with a non-metal chlorine and you get NaCl. Similarly, hydrogen reacts with your chlorine to form hydrogen chloride, HCl. Then, another example if I talk, sodium being a metal can react with oxygen, yes sir, Na2O. Now when we talk about similarly for hydrogen, can it react with oxygen, yes, you will get water. Still it is reacting with oxygen. So this is first pro uh, first problem uh, that hydrogen is acting like a metal. Now second problem, try understanding this. Chlorine is a non-metal. Okay? Chlorine in its molecular form is Cl2. Hydrogen also is H2 in its molecular form. So this is one example of how your hydrogen now behaves like your chlorine which is a non-metal. So here we saw hydrogen behaving like a metal, here we are looking at hydrogen behaving as a non-metal. Now look over here, your sodium is reacted with your chlorine. But the chlorine being a non-metal reacts with sodium. Look at this, hydrogen now starts behaving like a non-metal and it reacts with sodium which is a metal. So sodium hydride, a compound formed where hydrogen is behaving like a non-metal. Similarly, your Chlorine reacting with carbon which is another non-metal. Hydrogen reacting with carbon which is a non-metal. So in both these cases if you see in the first case your hydrogen is acted like a metal. Okay. Now when we talk about your groups and periods in your Mendeleev's periodic table your metal comes in group 1. Okay. Then when we talk about your hydrogen, okay, uh, sorry, your non-metal, non-metal like chlorine, okay. Now chlorine ka one group, one particular group is referred to as halogens, okay. And that group is group number 7 in Mendeleev periodic table. So because it is behaving like a non-metal, okay, like chlorine, fluorine, bromine, which are also referred to as halogens, it can be placed even in group 7. So when hydrogen acting like a metal, it is placed in group 1. 
when hydrogen behaving like a non metals or your family known as your halogens it it can be placed at group 7 so where to keep group 1 or group 7 still a question okay and that became a demerit or a limitation for your mendeleev periodic table okay so over here again what we talk about we are going to quickly see that what type of questions they will be asking you the first thing state mendeleev's periodic law okay properties of the elements are the periodic function of its atomic masses and not number then second you have to define groups you have to define periods so the vertical columns in the mendeleev's periodic table are referred to as groups the horizontal rows in the mendeleev's periodic table are referred to as periods then state the merits okay the merits are first your beryllium and boron wala point where you have changed the atomic mass of beryllium from 14.09 to 9.4 and hence beryllium is now placed before boron the second point what are the vacant spaces that he has kept and third the noble gas which were discovered later on and without changing the main mendeleev table they were placed to the extreme right of the mendeleev periodic table so this three points generally this particular question is asked for three marks or two marks okay you have to write these everything so now when we talk about your limitations what you have to do is these are your four limitations obviously the fourth point is more important because it it has a bigger content out of it so see to it that if you want to fetch full marks the fourth point shouldn't miss out okay and the first three points are very simple to remember there are hardly few uh, you know two two liners which are there but the last point do not miss out and if you remember the sub points it becomes very easy for you to recollect during the exams in this way you can at least aim for full marks in your exams